Hey there, good afternoon. I'm Elliot Forrest from WQXR. Every uh, afternoon, 3 to 7, I hope your radios are tuned to WQXR. That's when I'm on. Score at 4 at 4 o'clock. We feature movie music every afternoon at 4. Thank you so much for being here in the Jerome L. Green Performance Space. This is uh, the fourth season of our collaboration with Juilliard for these free midday masterpieces. How many people have been here before? Enjoy it? Oh, a lot of return, a lot of return customers. And uh, how many people are members? Oh, thank you so much. And those of you who are not, guess what? We have a fun drive coming up. <laughs> it's funny how we always have a fun drive coming up. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Jerome L. Green uh, folks at the foundation for their support here. And also, uh, relatively new, we want to thank Steinway for this incredible, can we hear it for this incredible piano? <laughs> feel like the price is right. <laughs> you don't want to know the price. Um, before we begin, uh, maybe it's a good time to take out your cell phones. You can actually share this event if you know how to do that on Facebook because we're going to be or are live. Hi, hi everyone on Facebook. Um, and then once you've done that, uh, silence your devices. That would be very helpful. And you can actually check on this if you enjoy it, want to see it again, or share it with your friends after the fact. If you go to WQXR's Facebook page, you can see these and all the performances we do. We have a couple of great events coming up right here in the green space. Two of my favorite things, classical music and beer, uh, being combined. We've been doing these beer jams for a while. They've been really successful and uh, great fun. Uh, this one uh, will be uh, in honor of Valentine's Day and beer. Uh, we'll be celebrating great love affairs and great breakups. We'll hear great romantic music and combining some uh, local beers and maybe a love potion or two. We'll have performances by real-life musical couples, uh, violinist Tessa Lark and bassist Michael Thurber, uh, violinist Ste Stefan Jaquive and clarinetist Yunan Kim, pianist Greg Kalor and Dasha Kolyanyuk, and a special performance by Chamber Queer. That is on February 12th, so make sure and come. That's next week. Uh, then uh, also just know we have an array of craft beers from Six Point and Green Harbor, Wild East and Alewife for your sampling pleasure. So uh, maybe date night or maybe Men to Broken Heart, uh, <laughs> come and check out our beer jam right here in the green space. February 28th, a very special evening, Stephen Isserlis, the uh, great performer is going to be right here, all with his amazing hair as well as his instrument, so make sure and check out that. And we've started something else new in the last uh, couple of weeks, um, and that is uh, a, a midday meditation with live classical music. We'll be doing that again this coming Friday, 1230, music and meditation right here in the green space. You can check that out at wqxr.org slash events. So very special performer today. Uh, she started playing cello at the age of two. Sophia Basilar was accepted into the Juilliard School at the age of 10, another, another overachiever here in our green space. Uh, she studied in, uh, music in Paris and Berlin, as well as visual arts at the Museum of Modern Art here in New York. Some of her teachers have included the great cellist, Godier Capuçon and Nicholas Alstadt. She's uh, currently in the Artist Diploma Program at Juilliard. Basilar has already performed throughout Europe and Canada and the United States, Chile and Israel. She, gave, she will give her Carnegie Hall recital debut this coming December. You're getting to see her before she makes her Carnegie debut. One of her career goals is to expand the reach of classical music by performing in alternative venues. And maybe this counts today too, but she uh, uh, likes to play in galleries and nightclubs. And in her words, she likes to dabble in fashion and marketing and tech and design as well. And if you're already a little, feeling a little overwhelmed by her accomplishments, uh, Basilar is fluent in English, Spanish, Mandarin, French, and German. <laughs> uh, performing with her is Alexandra Joan, who is in demand as a soloist, pianist, and a chamber musician. She's performed uh, at many of the major venues and festivals in Europe. She has an active career here in the United States, a graduate of Juilliard, and some of her teachers include Ursula Oppens, and Richard Good, and she actually performed right here in the green space as part of our Chopin Marathon. So please welcome Alexandra Joan and Sophia Basilar.
So first of all, I just want to say thank you for being here today with me and Alex. Um, and I just want to say a few words about the first four pieces we performed. So as part of WQXR's Midday Masterpieces series, I was charged with the task of creating a recital program around one of the core repertoire works, in this case, the Rachmaninoff Cello Sonata, which you'll be hearing next. And of course, when choosing a core work, um, a certain amount of conscious volition must be employed so as to not create a total cliche of a recital program. So I knew I wanted an all Russian recital, but uh, I wanted to stay away from works like Tchaikovsky's Pezzo Capriccioso or Rachmaninoff's Vocalis, because while they are incredible works, they're kind of the go-to Russian cello works. And so instead, I chose uh, to do four transcriptions of two piano pieces and two Russian art songs. So the first work you heard was a Tchaikovsky piano nocturne, and the second one, um, None But The Lonely Heart is one of my favorite and one of his most beloved vocal works. 
The third piece was Val Sentimental, also by Tchaikovsky, which was originally piano waltz. And the last one was a Rimsky-Korsakov art song called, well, sometimes it's translated as Captured by the Nightingale, and sometimes it's captured by, uh, sometimes it's translated as uh, the Rose. So I don't speak Russian. I have to do a little bit more research on the text. I'm not sure which is the correct translation, but one or the other. So, uh, you know, the last piece in particular, I think, really captures the lyricism and the romanticism and the poeticism of ru the Russian soul. And this next work, the Rachmaninoff Sonata, also captures the lyricism, romanticism, and passion, and beauty, and all the feels that everyone loves in Russian romantic music. So I hope you enjoy.
suppressing a cough for the last 40 minutes. <laughs> That's why I asked them to have water out here. Sorry. Um, so the next piece, and the final piece, is also a Russian work by a still living composer named Nikolai Kapustin. And Kapustin was classically Kapustin. K-A-P-U-S-T-I-N. Yeah. So um, he was classically trained, but he developed a huge interest in jazz. And many of his compositions, particularly um, the piano etudes, which you've played, actually sound like essentially live improvisation. So his style of writing is basically written out jazz, which actually is more complicated to play than actual live jazz because it needs to sound like it's improvised, but it's not, and that's what we realized in rehearsal. <laughs> so actually, um, the interesting thing is that with a lot of cello show pieces, they tend to be very much focused on the cello and the piano is kind of just an accompaniment. Whereas in this case, it's really one unit uh, between the two lines. And so after the first rehearsal, I realized that I would just have to learn the piano part as well in order to understand the piece. So we got it together. And it's a very fun piece. I hope you enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 